God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We'll enter into his gates with thanksgiving in our heart, and enter into his courts with praise, and be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord. He is good. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be lifted up. He's worthy to be exalted in all of the earth. So we bless God's holy and his righteous name. Come on, would you please join us for another edition of uh, our creation uh, life study? All Creations Life Study, and we appreciate you all for joining us. So at this time, would you please uh, take time to share the stream on whatever uh, <clears throat> device you're on, your your laptop, your computer, your, your, your iPad, your tablets. Would you please share the word of the Lord? We say God bless all of you that have joined us tonight. We believe that there's a word from the Lord. We thank God for all of you. So again, as you see on the bottom of the screen, don't forget to do a share. So I'm going to be sharing right now. Join us for another edition of hashtag of hashtag <clears throat> life study. All right. So go ahead and put that. And I just usually put something like with all creation H A C N H F C. All right. We appreciate you all. God bless you, Elder Walker. God bless you, Sister Sutton. God bless you, Brother Antonio Jones. We appreciate you all joining us. Uh, God bless you, Mother Green. Come on in. Come on. Let's get these numbers up. Let's share the word of the Lord. Let's get this word out. We're going to continue on with our series. But before we go, I want to thank <clears throat> Evangelist Fariga Drayton Conway, uh, Evangelist DC, just for filling in for me uh we are so appreciative of her uh for being in place uh where i was last week in memphis uh in the hotel it wasn't as strong and i didn't trust the signal and i didn't want to have all the technical difficulties of trying to do bible study from memphis and so um thank god she was able to fill in for me and uh just me listening for the few moments that i did when i did log on and said hello to everyone it was a good teaching. Uh, definitely trust her ministry and trust uh, her delivery. And so we thank God for her. We appreciate her. Thank God for Elder Edwards uh, leading in prayer and just been in place. I'm so excited uh, to teach on tonight, uh, not because I wasn't here last week, but because uh, just the Lord just began to deal with me in that Philippians um, text. Um, just added some, some, some thoughts to some things that I already had in place. And I'm so thankful. We want to say God bless to uh, Mariah Grant. We thank God for her and her family. We thank God for just adding to the church uh, as such to be saved. We're thankful for uh, you, Sister Vinnie Williams, being in Minnesota, so faithful, uh, so dedicated to the work of the Lord, uh, being away as an e-member. And so we say God bless you. God bless you. Uh, I see you, Brother Cortez. A little God bless you, sir. We appreciate you. Um, God bless you, Elder Edwards. Listen, God bless you, God bless you, Sister Lowe. I want you all to prepare to receive the word. Um, before we go into prayer, I'm going to tell you we're going to be in Philippians chapter 3, verse 17 through 21. I want to know you to know that we're praying for the bereaved family. We're praying for the bereaved family. We're praying for uh, Deacon Michael Moore and his family. Uh, just recently, he, passed, he lost his brother. His brother passed. And I had an opportunity to meet certain family members there at the funeral. And one of the cousins that was there at the funeral, she uh, recently on 314 uh, day, uh, March 14th, had a, an accident and <clears throat> seemed to be recovering, uh, ended up having a surgery and um, just, just died. Uh, things were going well and all of a sudden died. So we're praying for Deacon Mike. Uh, that funeral is this weekend, and so we're praying for him as well as Evangelist Moore. We're praying for them. So saints, be praying for Deacon Mike, be praying for Evangelist Moore. And then also I want the church to be praying for me, pray for our family, um, my my brother, my, my, my brother on my dad's side, Mark King, lost his son. Uh, his son was tragically killed in Columbus, Ohio, and the funeral will be this Friday. And so... Uh, the elders and I will be in place at the funeral home um, eulogizing um, my nephew. So be praying for the, the King family, the Tompkins family, that the Lord will strengthen them. And then some of those family members are related 
to members of Whirlwind of Praise. So we're going to be praying for them. Just be praying for the strength of the Lord that God would comfort in this hour. I was able to be a blessing to the family. Amen. Not just in, in words and deeds, but a blessing to the family. And so we're praying for uh, them. We're praying for Sister Crowley. Sister Crowley, those of you that know um, the desserts that used to be made at our dinners and Sister Crowley and her mother that would always be with her, her mother passed. And so we're praying for Sister Crowley in the passing of her mother. 95 years young, and then the Lord let her see life. And I talked with her today, literally maybe an hour and a half ago. And <clears throat> she was just like, Pastor, we knew it was going to happen because after I lost my brother, uh, after I lost my brother, my mom just kind of shut down, stopped eating and drinking. And so we're praying for the Crowley family. Pray that God would strengthen them and that God would uh, sustain them in this time of bereavement. And as we said, no matter how old, no matter how much you expect it, death is sudden. You can know that a person is 105 and lived a well life, but 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 to be pulled out of this world is something. So we're praying for the Moore family. We're praying for my family. And we're praying for the Crowley family that the Lord will strengthen them again. God bless you, Mother Duncan. God bless you, Evangelist Spragans. God bless you, Evangelist Moore. I want everybody that can, if you will, would you please join us on this Friday? Join us on this Friday. This Friday in two days, in two days, April 15th, we will be having uh, the last saints of Christ and we'll be having our children and youth ministry, youth and children's ministry will be going forth at 7 p.m. And so we have a uh, slate of preachers and evangelists that will be ministering the word of the Lord. Uh, I tried to get at least four people to do one of the things, but it looked like I'm going to be stuck having to do it. I wanted a woman to do it and uh, we'll see. But uh, nevertheless, we have six speakers that will be in place to do um, the teaching. And I'll just try to interject something on one of the things again. So we're believing God that you will be blessed by this word. We're going to have good music, good singing, and uh, good word. So join us this Friday at 7 p.m. in person. If you're in the St. Louis region, if you're uh, joining us online, join us on this platform as you normally do, or, uh, whether it be Facebook or whether it be YouTube. Join us. I'm going to ask that you all be prepared to put in the comments uh, prayer. God bless you, Sister Dini, your prayer. Um, the supplications uh, to be made of all men. I've been doing a lot of studying on the history of the church. And so I want you all to know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. It's according to the power that works within us. I want you to be in place uh, right now to draw your minds in as we go before the throne of grace so we can obtain mercy. And so we, we, we bless God's holy and his righteous name. Come on, just begin to saturate wherever you are. Begin to speak well of him. Saturate the place that you're in uh, with, his, with his presence. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. Come on, put those comments in for prayer requests. Amen. We, we got a good report from a person that we've been praying for, from Evans Farika. So we're going to continue to pray that God would deliver and set free. So I want you all to just put those comments in and let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We thank you that you hear us when we pray. We know that you hear us whatsoever you pray. We know that we have the positions that we ask of you. And you told us in your word by John, that if we ask anything according to your will, hear us. And what else? Well, God, we know that you're going to do it. And so we pray even now that you would touch the Edwards family, that you would touch Jackie Brown. What is wrong? You make right, God. You deliver, you set free. We thank you just for strengthening them now, God. Whatever they're dealing with, God, touch. We pray for Micah that you would touch his body. We pray that you would regulate the issues in his brain, the issues in his neurology, uh, neuro neurological system. We pray that you would touch him now from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. That when they go and do the MRI and when the report comes back, we'll know that you're the God that healed your people. That we speak the word of the Lord, that what was is no longer. We speak deliverance. We speak God wholeness. We bind sickness, disease, and infirmity. God, we pray that you would just have your way and move by your spirit. 
Thank you, oh God, that, that the, that's right, that God, for when the saints, we prayed on Tuesday for a prayer request, and the saints have been praying on uh, the ministry line for uh, Sister Fariga, that God, you touched, that you touched Brother James. He had a stroke, was hospitalized, but, but had been laughing, oh God, and we thank you for it now. Thank you that today the report is the numbness is gone and that he has been released from the hospital. So God, we see that you're able to do it. We pray for Deacon Al, whatever is wrong, you make right. We pray for Sharice Bass that you would touch now, God. Give a mind to be saved and set free, oh God. Give her strength, oh God. God, we bind the heaviness. We bind the depression. We bind, we bind the enemy that will try to pull her down. But we pray, God, that you will lift her out of the mire and the muck. We thank you, O oh God, for just strengthening now your people, God. Bless our church. Bless all creation, God. Take us higher. Do what you want to do with us, God. We thank you for the anointing that rests in our house. But, God, we pray that that anointing would continue to destroy yokes, that you would add to the church as such to be saved, that we'll be the church that you're calling for in this season, God. We pray that you would bless with homes and jobs, Regardless to what we see with inflation, regardless of what we see with food prices, we have an assurance of what David said, that we've never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. Thank you, God, that you are our sustainer, that you are our provider, that you have blessed us even in the midst of what we're going through. We thank you like Isaac, that you blessed him 100 fold in a famine because he decided to sow a seed. So God, we choose to plant righteousness on the inside of us. We pray now for Renita's husband. We pray now for her children. We pray now for her grandchildren, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for turning things around. There are people here tonight, God, they need you. They've tuned in, especially because they heard about what's happening. And God, we thank you that you're moving and turning things around. We thank you that you're mobilizing us to find ourselves doing what it is that you've called us to do. We bind the hand of the evil one now. We command Satan. We're not saying Satan, the Lord, rebuke you because God, you've given us the authority and the authority that rises on, on the inside, that resonates on the inside, that comes forth. We bind Satan now and we know that he is the father of lies. And we thank you, oh God, that he is in control because of the word of God that's on the inside of us. Thank you that dem demons believe, but they tremble, God. Thank you that is at the name of Jesus, that every knee would bow, every tongue confess. And so, God, tonight we bind the hand of the enemy. We bind sickness, disease, and infirmity. We bind confusion. We bind the spirit of fear. And we command your presence, God, to take control. And as the people begin to shut the door, God, we thank you that they're going to be swept clean. And, God, their houses are going to be clean and put in order. And that they will replace those spirits with your Holy Ghost with your move, so that when the enemy tries to come with other demons, oh God, that God, they will see that the house is clean. We thank you for doing it now. Bless the pastor. Bless me, oh God, as I continue to lead your people. Bless pastors everywhere. Bless the elders, the mothers, the deacons, our leadership team. Oh God, bless our administrators. Bless, oh God. Oh God, thank you for adding to the church. Thank you for blessing in, in our homes, oh God, that as you bless our homes collectively, that we will be blessed as a church. God, we thank you that we have a word that other sheep you, we have, which are not of this fold, them you must also bring. Thank you that there's going to be one fold and one shepherd. We bless your holy and high name. We thank you, oh God, for touching and turning things around. Oh, touch the Crowley family. Touch the Moore family the King family, the Tompkins family, the Futura family, as we go through these bereavements, oh God, give us that are having the light, that shines light. Let our light shine. But as our light shine, give us a word that will break up the fallow ground so they may seek you, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us to receive the word on good ground. Help us to take what we hear tonight and apply it to our life. We bless your holy and your high name. Strengthen these, your people, that we will go forth in power and might. Raise us for your glory. Use us for your purpose. Remove flesh. Remove fear and doubt. Thank you that you've rebuked the devourer for our sake and that you've cast devils out of our mind and that you've anointed us to say yes to the counsel of your will. We say yes to your will. Yes to your way. We bless your holy and high name. We speak wisdom, O oh God. Help us to apply wisdom. 
God, we're asking you not to just pull us out of things that we find ourselves putting ourselves into, but God, help us to use wisdom so when you deliver us, we'll know how not to go back. So God, as you give us breakthrough, we'll know how to not go back. So where people are designed to break down, thank you that you're giving them the anointing to break through. For David told us you're the God of breakthrough, and we thank you for it now. Thank you, God, that we sit in our wealthy place. I speak Psalm 66, that we sit on our wealthy place, that we're at the point of a breakthrough, oh God. Thank you for restoring what the locust worm and the canker worm have stolen, God. The palm worm, God. We thank you that you're restoring it, God. Oh God, there's somebody who's watching now that needs you right now in their finances. God can give them a complete and utter turnaround now. They're about to lose their place, but God, you're going to give them turnaround. They're about to lose their car, but God, you're going to give them a turnaround. And if you've done it for me, you can do it for them. You're no God of respect of person. God touched sick bodies. We bind stroke conditions. We bind high blood pressure. We bind sugar diabetes. In the name of Jesus, touch that child with that headache. Oh, God, release the pressure, oh, God. In the name of Jesus, God, that person that's dealing with the headache, God, touch Relieve the pressure, oh God. Give them relief. The Advil, God. The Aleve couldn't do it. The ibuprofen couldn't do it. But God, you give them a hand of touch now that you will rebuke, oh God, with the hand touch, the migraine. God, as we sing your word, we rebuke the migraine, oh God. I feel it so strong in my spirit. Oh God, the the, the tingling in the legs, we rebuke it. We believe you, God, that you're healing. He said, yes, I'm healing you now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that eyesight, correct it now, God. Even for the job, there's somebody, God, that's watching, that's dealing with an issue with their eyes that needs to be corrected relating to the physical for the job. God, turn it around now. Oh, God, if that's you, just receive your healing even now. Just receive your healing power now. In the name of Jesus, I believe, God, you're doing things for Sister Lowe family. Touch those, those, those nieces, oh, God, that we know from coming up to St. Louis. Touch them now. Save their mother, oh God. Remove the hand of the enemy, God. Bring them back together with love. Bind them with cords of love, oh God. Save now. Deliver now. In the Habasha, in the name of Jesus, we receive it by faith and we declare that it is so now in the name of Jesus Christ. God, touch the saints. Touch the saints, oh God. In the name of Jesus, go, God, go, go before us. Ooh, I just heard the Lord say, it. he said, tell my people I'm going before them. He said, tell my people I'm going before you. Whatever you need him to do, if you would just speak it, type it on the screen and say, God, thank you that you're going before me. Oh, thank you for, for going before me, God. And we bless your holy and high name. In Jesus' name, we say yes, and it is so. I hope you stick with me. I felt led to make those announcements as well as pray. I want you to stick with me. I got about 40 minutes to try to get through what I have tonight. But you all are going to stay with me. I trust that you will. Hallelujah. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, for going before us. Thank you, O oh God. That's right, for, for going before us. God is going. He said, tell my people I'm going before them. There are things that you have before me. I'm trying to get to the lesson, but the Lord is speaking. There are things that you have before me. I, the Lord, have already gone before you. While you're presenting it to me, I've already gone before you. While you're giving it to me, because I know your heart and I know what's going on in your mind. I've already gone before you. And I see and I know. I know what you're dealing with. I know what's before you. But because I've already gone before you, you shall walk in favor. You shall walk in my favor. You will see it. You will see it. Somebody needs to hear it. You're going to live to see this thing happen. Uh, it won't come nigh you. It won't come nigh you. It's done. It's already done. Hallelujah. Bless your holy name. Just receive it right where you are. Receive it. Receive it from the living God. Praise him that it's done. Praise him. Oh, my God. Praise him that it's done. Praise him that it's done. Praise him that it's done. Just like that. Praise him that it's done. Hallelujah. Praise him that it's done. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive the deliverance. Receive the breakthrough. Go check again. Go apply again. Go and get what's yours. He that's begun the good work in you is able to perform it until the day of the Lord Jesus. It's done. Your son will be saved, woman. Your daughter will be saved, woman. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we declare that it is so now. We bless your name. He says, tell my people.
just release a praise in the atmosphere right where you are. Just release it and watch him do it. Watch him do it. Watch him do it. Some of you all are going to have testimonies before this Sunday. You're going to have a testimony that God did it again. Ooh, that's going to be your hashtag. Hashtag God did it again. God, he did it again. Hmm. But if you praise him right now and say it's already done, you're going to have a testimony before Sunday. God, I speak that for myself. I speak that for all creation. I speak that for my house. I speak that for you, Farik. I speak that for you, Elder Edwards. I speak it for Kenesha. I speak it for First Lady. God has done it again. Woo. He's turning around. Bye -bye. Glory bless your name. He's turning around. He's turning around. Come on. He's turning around. Receive it by faith. Receive it by faith. Come on, church. I'm trying to build your faith. Receive it by faith. Receive it by faith. Receive it by faith. Come on, let's go to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is found in Philippians chapter 3, verse 17 to, to, through 21. We know that we're in a series, Shoot That Realigns. Let's go. Stick with me, friends. I sound like that's what I'm telling you to do. I want you to stick with me. This is what Paul saying from the message translation of the Bible. He says, stick with me, friends. Keep track of those you see running the same course, headed for the same goal. There are many out there uh, taking other paths, choosing other goals, and trying to get you to go along with them. I've warned you of them many times. Sadly, I'm having to do it again. All they want is easy street. I don't want easy street. I don't want easy street. They hate Christ's cross. They hate his cross. But you of, of them many times, I'm sorry, but Easley Street is a dead end street. Those who live there make their bellies their God. Belches <laughs> are their praise. All they can think of is their appetites. But there's four more to life for us. Why? Because he says we're citizens of high heaven, not just heaven, but high heaven. We're waiting of the arrival of the Savior the master, Jesus Christ, who will transform our earthly bodies into glorious bodies like his own. He'll make us beautiful and whole with the same powerful skill by which he's putting everything as it should be under and around him. The word of the Lord is blessed. This is the word of the Lord. Just for a few moments as we go into lesson six, we've been dealing with the series Truth That Realigns truth that realigns. Tonight, I want to encourage you to do one thing. Realign your memory. Come on. You like that media card right there? I love it. Realign your memory. Come on, type it on screen. Say, I need to realign my memory. What, what I want you to know is, come on, come on, type it on screen. Say, I need to realign my memory. So what is our minds largely, What what what's in our mind largely determines our perspective? If you remember, we've been talking in the last few weeks, we've been talking about in lesson one, uh, the need for kingdom mindsets. We talked about the brain versus the mind. And then in lesson two, we talked about know that God is at work. And then lesson three, we talked about are your assets aligned? Uh, number four, the fourth lesson was work it out, not work for it, right? Number five, we've been aligned to reach our full potential. Last week, eventually Fariga brought a great word. And so tonight we're dealing with truth, the, the, the series truth that realigns that you need to realign your memory, realign your memory, because what is in your mind largely determines your perspective, what we think influence what we see. So it's important to live a joyful life. Come on, say that with me. I need to live a joyful life. Even in the low times, the Bible lets us know that, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So even in living a joyful life, you need to realign your memory. I believe that what is in our minds largely determines our perspective, my brothers and sisters. What we think influence what we see. For example, I want you to look at this first phrase. I want everybody to look at this first phrase. The first phrase, number one, look at these words on the screen. Woman without her man is a savage. Just look at it. Look at it. So, so look at these words on the screen. Read them. Woman, the word without, the word her, the, mer the word man, the word is, the word a, the word savage. So what's in your mind will determine how you punctuate the phrase. 
What's in your mind determines how you break this phrase down. So how you punctuate this phrase, my brother and sister, makes a huge difference, right? Look at it again. So, so how many of you all saw this sentence? Look at number two. How many of you all immediately saw a woman without her, man is a savage? How many of you all thought that? A woman without her, a man is a savage. Or if you punctuated a difference, it's a huge difference. How many of you all saw this phrase? Look at the third one. Woman without her man is a savage. Mm. What's in your mind and how you determine how you punctuate the phrase that makes a huge difference. So let's look at it again. Number one, the word woman, the word without, the word her, the word man, the word is, the word savage. So what's in your mind determines how you punctuate the phrase. So what you have in your mind determines what you see. So how you punctuate the phrase makes a huge difference. So how many of you all immediately saw the second sentence? Woman, colon, without her, comma, man is a savage. So it's looking that a man needs a woman. If a man, if the woman is not in a man's life, he's a savage. Or did you see number three? A woman without her man is a savage. What's in your mind determines your perspective. Thank you, Sister Regan. So as God continues to consider the prize, I'm sorry, as Paul continues to uh, consider the prize for which God has called the church, he, he called the church to heaven word. He wants to align the concept in their mind. So he's used the image of the account to deal with profit and loss. He used the figure of running the race to deal with the focus and how he moves to the picture of an, an alien citizen uh, and how the alien citizen deals with being in this new place. So we need to consider, if you look at chapter three, I don't have time to read it all. You need to consider where, to whom, and to what we truly belong. I'm going to say it again. As believers, we need to consider three things. Where, to whom, to what we truly belong. First of all, my brothers and sister, Paul says that our, our realign, that we need to realign our minds, that we must remember our home base. Come on, type that on screen and say, I have to remember my home base. So we need to remember that where we are from. That's why I said you need to know where. Where are we from? So it is uncommon to be a citizen of one country, but travel to, uh, it's not really uncommon for a citizen to be of one country, but to travel and to live in another. There are really many examples of Americans living in most every country of the world, and there are citizens of most every country of the world living in America. But it's not where we live, but where we are born that determines our citizenship. Because the Bible says that, uh, but our citizenship is in heaven in this text. If you go to the book of John, John chapter 1, verse number 2, verse number 13, it reminds us, yet to all who have received him, to those who believed his name, he gave them the right, watch this, to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or, human, or, or even a husband's will, but born of God. Somebody need to say, I'm born of God. Being born of God, watch this, we are, because if I tell you you remember your home base, then you have to remember that you are a citizen of the kingdom. You are a citizen of heaven. Uh, when, we, when we understand what we've been baptized into, right, it establishes and it confirms who we are. Not, not just baptism naturally so, but baptism to sin, that you were buried in trespasses and sin, but God resurrected you, Right. You're not children of the earth, but children of God. Someone has said that a Christian is not a person who sitting on earth looking up to heaven, but who being in heaven looks down on earth throughout his life, recognizing that he is a foreigner indeed. We are, I believe, resident aliens on earth. This was true for Jesus. Often when you look at the text, he pointed out that he was not of this world. But he had come down from heaven, my brothers and sisters, and therefore he was to do the Father's will. When you look at all the Gospels, they all describe Jesus' life on earth as only a visit. He was born in a borrowed manger. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. I can preach that. And often had no place to lay his head. When his disciples went home, he went to the Mount of Olives to be with his father. His whole life was framed by heavenly citizenship. He reminded us throughout the teaching that I'm not here to stay because what you see right now in three days is going to be destroyed. It's going to be destroyed, but in three days, I'll build it back up again. And the same, I feel something in my spirit, Farika, was true for Paul. He knew his dual citizenship. Come on. Somebody say, I got dual citizenship. 
One more on more than one occasion, he used his earthly Roman citizenship to fend off punishment and gain more favorable treatment. Yet he also knew that his real citizenship was heavenly. He therefore built his eternal life around that. His citizenship proved the framework of his life. This means that we are to make heaven our priority. That's one of my first points. Again, type on the screen, heaven has to be my priority. Heaven has to be my priority. Jesus Christ, not only was he an earthly leader in government, but he is our leader and he is our ruler. And so our allegiance as citizens of Christ's kingdom and the nation that we in is uh, our secondary loyalty. Isn't it any wonder that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19 to 21 and 33, do not store up yourselves treasures. Or one translation says, do not lay yourselves up treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But look what he says. He says, but store yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and old rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. And then we know what it says in verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be given or added unto you as well. So it is this priority of your life. Is this the priority of your life? As you travel this life, I want you to remember your home base. I come from heaven. And so I am a spirit living on this earth, having an earthly account. And I, I, I have this body that has a soul. And so I want you to know that Jesus Christ is coming back for a church. We are also to remember our destination. So since I'm not to make heaven my priority, the next one I want you to know is to remember your destination. Your destination is to return to home base. Come on, say that we, oh, I can preach that that my destination is to return to home base. Our names are inscribed in heaven's book of life. Uh, in other words, it's, described, it's, it's inscribed in heaven's registry. Our rights are secure in heaven. Our interests are promoted in heaven. Our inheritance is stored in heaven. Our mansion is prepared in heaven. That's why Jesus told the church, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, do what? Believe also in me because in my father's house, his house. What's amazing to me is whenever I read this, it's a house with many mansions. Oh, my God. It's a house with many mansions because house is the dwelling place. But watch this. Mansion describes how I'm going to live up there. Is there anybody that can say in his house, I have a mansion, right? And, and it's being prepared for me. And we are headed for heaven. I know somebody saying, Pastor, why are you talking about heaven? Because I want you to remember, that's how you're going to make it down on here on this earth, that while you're here on this earth, you got to know some things are happening in store for you there. We are headed for heaven uh, because Jesus has promised to bring us home. That's why if you look at John chapter 14, verse three, GNT, which is the good news translation, he says, and after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself so that you will be where I am. I love that translation. We have an appointment, watch this, with Jesus. If you look at verse number 20 of Philippians chapter three, it says, we eagerly await a savior from them, the Lord Jesus, whom by the power, reading from the message too, that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. So when I think of getting to heaven, I get excited about seeing what heaven is really like. I can only imagine, but they, but that can wait because I'm more excited about meeting those patriarchs, not just, I want to meet Jesus. But I want to look at Jacob. I want to look at Abraham. I want to look at Joseph, Moses, Isaiah, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and so many others. I can only imagine. They they can wait because I'm more excited to greet my, I want to meet my loved ones. I want to greet my aunt, my mom. I want to meet siblings, uh, grandparents. I want to meet uh, those individuals that have gone before me. I can only imagine. But they can wait because I want to see my Savior first and foremost. So you hold him in his glory. That's why a lady by the name of Carrie Breck, she wrote, Face to face with Christ, my Savior. Face to face, what it will be. When the rapture, I behold him. Jesus Christ, who died for me. Only faintly now I see him with darkened veil between. But a blessed day is coming, church, when his glory shall be seen. What rejoicing in his presence will be when we are all banished, grief and pain. When the crooked ways, as Elder just put it in the text, uh, are straightened, when the dark things shall be plain. Face to face, oh, bless, blissful moment. Face to face to see and know. Face to face with my Redeemer, Jesus Christ, who loves me so. Face to face, she says, I shall behold him. For beyond the starry sky, face to face in all his glory, I shall see him by and by. Come on, come on, come on, type on screen and say, I can only imagine. 
What I do know is this meeting with Jesus is going to be radically transformative. Our bodies, the Bible says, will be transformed. Because if you look in the 15th chapter of Corinthians, Paul tells us that in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we will all be changed. That's the good news. Since most of us have our real concerns about our body, how we look and don't look, how we look as we get older, but keeping our bodies healthy and together and so forth, forget plastic surgery, forget money spent on all the cosmetics, all the workouts, Jesus is going to give us a new body. The Bible tells us that this new body uh, will be our body. But it'll be different. A couple of generations ago, former, uh, a farmer had took his family to this big city for the very first time. They had never seen tall buildings or sites that were so impressive. The farmer dropped his wife off at a department store, took his son with him to the bank. The tallest of all these buildings, as they walked in the lobby, they saw something else for the first time. For the first time, this family in different places saw an elevator. And as they watched, the doors opened and the elderly woman got in. The doors closed her and, and, and dialed over the doors went right uh, to the right and then back to the left. The doors opened again and out came a beautiful young lady. The former watched this, was amazed. He turned to his son and said, you rate right here. I'm going to get your mother and run her through that thing. I'm not sure it will quite work like that, but I want you to know that your bodies are going to be different. I want you to know that it, let me, let me tell you what uh, the catechism says, even my very flesh raised by the power of Christ will be reunited with my soul made like a glorious body. I want you to know that the resurrection appearance of Christ, that when you saw what we read in Sunday school, he had his body, but yet he could not be recognized until he revealed himself. The Bible says they shut the door because of fear, but Jesus Christ passed Elder Nick through the doors, walls, and appeared and disappeared at his will. Paul said it was a mystery, but it is true. We will be perfectly suited for heaven like Christ. I'm telling you, I can only imagine, church. That's not all Paul wrote. He wrote that the Lord Jesus Christ, whom by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, even through Jesus' power, our lives are being transformed. Somebody, you need to know right now that your life is being transformed because Jesus has the power. Here it is. What you're dealing with, chaotic situation, he has the power to bring everything under his control. If he can change our bodies to be glorious bodies one day, then there's nothing in this life that Jesus cannot transform. Because I want you to know that if you remember your home base, you can tap on what the squirrel says. The word says, watch this, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The word also says, whatever you bind on earth is already bound in heaven. Whatever you bind and loose down on earth is already loose in heaven. When you understand that your home base is heaven, then you understand that I'm just a stranger traveling through. And so since I'm a stranger traveling through, I got the backup. I got the backup of heaven. And there's nothing in this life that Jesus cannot transform. I don't know who needs to hear this. Whatever you're going through, Christ can transform it. He can make the wilderness blossom. You just missed it. He can make the wilderness blossom. You know in the Old Testament, you know I'm in the New Testament, that there, that it talks about wilderness. It talks about what happened in the wilderness. It talks about what Jesus did in the wilderness. But you all remember that scripture that in the wilderness grew green grass. I don't know who needs to hear this. In your weary days, in your wilderness times, God's going to allow you to blossom. Jesus can make the leper skin clean. Jesus can make the adulterous woman a saint. Jesus can make uh, Mary Magdalene, who had seven demons. Watch this. Because she shut the door, she had seven demons. She became the first one to realize that the grave was empty. That's a testimony right there. The woman who had the demons, the one who was possessed, the one who had everything going against her, when she met Jesus, I can preach right there, just let me make it to Jesus. Who in here know, who out there knows that when you can just make it to Jesus, he'll make the darkness light. He'll make the crooked place straight. I don't know who needs to hear this, but I speak over you that God's going to transform you in your wilderness season. God's going to cause you to blossom in your wilderness season. God's going to call your skin to look new again. God's going to call you to go from a bad saint to, I mean, a bad person to a great saint. Is there anybody in here that know that Jesus, I feel like preaching y'all, can make the blind see. He can make the lame to walk. He can make the dumb to see. He can bring dead things back to life when our passions are wrong and when our passions are strong. Jesus is still able. I don't know who needs to hear this. When your passion is wrong, when your passion is strong, Jesus is still able. When we're weak in the flesh, 
are in the spirit, Jesus is able. When our will is off track, Jesus is able. When temptation is heavy, Jesus is able. When the task seems too heavy, Jesus is able. When sorrow is overwhelming, Jesus is able. When our body is disintegrating, Jesus is able. When our marriage and our family is rocky, I want you to know, church, Jesus is able. Jesus is able to do far more exceeding than we could ever ask or even imagine. That's why you got to get your memory realigned to remind yourself that what Paul said, and I feel something stirring up in Romans 8 and 18, I consider that the present sufferings of this present world are not worthy to be compared to the glory that's about to be revealed. I feel like preaching here. I don't know who needs to hear this, but what you got to do, you got to do like Paul, that I consider, I reckon that the suffering of this present world, what I'm going through is not worthy compared to the glory that's going to be revealed in us. Can I tell you right now that a lot of times when the glory is going to be revealed in us, it's going to be done through us because God somehow or another used people. And I don't have this in the notes, Sister Frieda, but I feel it stirring up in my spirit in the Holy Ghost. You have this treasure in earthly vessels, Paul said, that the excellency of God may be of him and not of ourselves, that when you are weak, he makes you strong. I hear the Lord saying, you got to remind what Paul said. He said, I, I, there was something that was in my flesh that just kept sticking me. It was a thorn in my flesh. It was I was being buffeted by Satan. Some of y'all need to know, some things ain't going to be removed until you learn how to understand Stand that his strength is made perfect in your weakness. So that means sometimes you just have to understand you're weak so his strength can be made strong in you. Is there anybody in here that can say what Paul said? That's why we say what Paul said. That's why we can claim what Paul said. Come here, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 through 10, chapter uh, verse 16 through 18. He says, Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though the outward we are wasting away, yet inward we are being renewed day by day. I don't know who needs to hear this, but God says you're hard pressed on every side, yet you're not crushed. You're perplexed, but you're not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but you're not destroyed. I don't know who needs to go back and read it again. I'll read it again for you. Yes, you're hard pressed on every side, but you got a conjunction word in there, yet you're not crushed. Woo! I may be dealing with some stuff, and it may seem like this pressure be from the north, from the south, from the east, and the west, but I'm not, it's not going to crush me. It, it may be pressing me, but it ain't going to kill me. I'm perplexed, but I'm not in despair. Why? Because my memory has been aligned with Christ. I may be persecuted by things, but it's not. I'm not going to be forsaken because, lo, I'm with you always, even until the ends of the earth. I, I, I'm not going to be struck down. I, I may be struck down, but I'm not going to be destroyed. I'm here today to tell you that yet your inward man is being renewed day by day. I don't know who needs to hear this, but the reason why you ain't gave up yet is because you're being renewed day by day. Somebody by faith lift your hands to the screen and as a point of transfer and as a point of contact, God speaks over you right now that you're being renewed day by day. For what we're going through, for so look what one translation says. It says, for our slight and momentary troubles are achieving us a for a eternal glory that outweighs them all. So what you're dealing with is giving you something far greater that's going to outweigh everything that you're going through. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but we put it on what is unseen. For what is seen, the Bible says, is temporal, but what is unseen is eternal. That's what Romans 8 and 18 says. So you have to consider that this present sufferings are not worthy to be compared with the glory that's going to be revealed in us. And so you must understand, my brothers and sisters, that Paul is saying we have to eagerly await the Savior. And so our perspective is one of energetic in anticipation. And so uh, there's a lady by the name of Joni uh, Tata who, who had been paralyzed from her shoulders down uh, from driving in, uh, in an accident while she was driving as a young teenager. And for years, she had her heart set on heaven. It shows in her conversations, in, in her radio message, in her art that she did. And those who knew her often say that talking with her draws one to the very edge of heaven itself. Listen to what she said. She said, I can hardly believe it. I will shrivel bent fingers, um, uh, just a, a truck muscles, uh, knees are growing on, uh, no feeling of the shoulders down. Will one day I have a new body? She says, I'll be light, I'll be bright, and I'll be watched as clothed 
in righteousness. I'll be powerful and I'll be dazzling. It's easy for me to be joyful and hope. And that's exactly what I've been doing for these past 20 odd years after this accident. My assurance of heaven is so alive. Look at how she talks about it. She said, I've been making dates with friends, do all sorts of fun things once I get these new, this new body. I don't make, take these appointments lightly. I'm convinced things will really happen. She, watch this. She knew her destination and she knew she was headed for heaven. And she knew that she was in, in focus, she knew that her alignment for her memory. Sometimes you have to have this mindset. You got to have your memory aligned to let you know, I don't have to wait until things uh, uh, happen in heaven, but God can do things right now. But if I settle just on everything being the way it is now, I get complacent. I get caught up. And so I was thinking about that. I was thinking about this lesson. I started thinking about, uh, and I really don't like this movie, but I started thinking about it because I watched it before uh, in the movie uh, Madagascar. Uh, Marty is a well cared for zebra and he's at the New York City Zoo, right? But in front of his treadmill is a mural that depicts a scene of wild place he longs to go. So he noticed a disturbance in the grassy part of his enclosure. And suddenly this penguin head pops out, right? The penguin asks Marty, what continent is this? And Mar Marty puzzled, replies Manhattan. The penguin is disappointed, still in New York. And then to the other penguins, a boy, dive, dive, dive. But Marty is interested now. He says, wait a minute. What are you guys doing? One of the penguin pipes up. We're digging to Antarctica. The boss penguin, stunned by the underlying lack of discretion, slaps him. He asks Marty if he's ever seen penguins running around in New York. The penguin whispers that there aren't any. We don't belong here. It's not natural. Come on, y'all. The penguins say that they're going to wide open spaces of Antarctica, to the wild. The words are magic in Marty's ears, to the wild. You can actually go there. One by one, the penguins begin to disappear down in this hole. Frantically, he shouts, hey, hold up. Where is this place? Tell me where it is. Waving his slipper like the Jedi Master working a uh, mind trick. The penguins in tunes. You didn't see anything, right? And Marty says, right, right. Yes, sir. But his desire to escape has been ignited. Marty longs for a place that he has only seen in murals, representatives in paintings, right? Uh, not a photograph that's wild. He longs for it because deep down inside, watch this, as a zebra, he knows he was not created to live in a zoo. Even though he's looked after, even though he's recognized that this life is unnatural, it is not how it's supposed to be. So when it, when it's the chance to escape presents itself, he gets excited. I believe just like Marty, the people of the Lord should be that same way deep down inside. There's a quiet voice that resonates in your spirit that reminds you that this world that we inhabit is not where we're meant to be. We are made for heaven. Come on, type on the screen and say, I'm made for heaven. And God gives me glimpses of it every day in my life. And so what keeps Pastor Free Trail focused is, this ain't my home. I'm glad I live where I live. I'm glad I drive what I drive. But everything about my life reminds me that God has something far better for me. And I know some of us fear death. And I'm going to put us in there. Some of us ain't ready to go. And I'm not saying you should be. But what I'm telling you is when your mindset is aligned to understand this ain't my home base. I understand that I yearn for something better. I'm like Marty in the zoo. I see it. I see things. I'm telling you, this ain't my home. God has given us a glimpse of it every day, and we need direction. And fortunately, because of the word of God, we have it. And so through Christ on Calvary's cross, we, he has shown us the way. In fact, Buddha says, come this way. In fact, Confucius says, what is the way? But I tell you, my child, Jesus says, I am the way. He told us in the lesson that we had on Sunday, he said, Jesus, she said, Jesus, if you hadn't been here, my brother wouldn't have died. We sent word for you four or five days ago. And you just now showing up. Jesus said, you looking at the resurrection. He said, she said, we know that in the day he gonna rise again. He said, woman, I'm telling you, I am Woo! the resurrection, the truth. And the life. I'm here today to tell somebody to remind you that God is not through with you yet, and everything that you've gone through is just lining you up for where you need to be. Jesus says He's the, in fact, the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can get through the Father except through Him. And so, as we've gathered here uh, for tonight, and as we prepare to gather for this week, that the world called Easter Sunday, that the world calls Good Friday. I'm not here to argue and debate with you how does Friday night and Saturday and Sunday add up to three days. As a matter of fact, y'all already know I taught y'all. I already taught y'all that he rose up on that third day. So some of our calendars are off, but I'm not going to teach that tonight. But I will let you know it was three full days. 
he died. And then on the early in the Sunday morning, first day of the week, he got up again. And so as we commemorate and we talk about resurrection this weekend, I want you to realign your mind. I want you to realign your memory. I want you, those that are not saved, I want you to come to Jesus. I want you to remember the cross. I want you to anticipate heaven. I want you to be transformed. Those of you that have already come to Jesus, I want you to remember the cross. And how everyone that hangs from a tree is, is already cursed. So you don't have to deal with family curses anymore. You don't have to deal with what mommy and I do this because my mom and daddy did. No, Jesus took upon that beating for me. He died on the cross so that I don't have to be cursed anymore. And so because I'm saved, I am a believer. I anticipate heaven. Believers, I want you to get this in your spirit. You can anticipate heaven. You can be transformed right here on this planet Earth. As believers, this is not our home. He allowed us to go through this process. And so you need to say, I'm transformed. I'm made for heaven. God has for me uh, what's for me. But watch this. Can I tell you this, church? He's going to give you everything you need while you're on this earth to prepare you for where you're going. He says, I go to prepare a place. And he's given us everything that pertains, Peter said, to life and godliness for us to live. So I want you to, I want to pray with you. Let's pray. Grant us, oh God, that we may never lose the way through our self-will. So that we end up in far countries of our soul, that we may never abandon the struggle, but that we may endure to the end and so we can be saved, that we may never drop out of this race because the race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but the one who endures to the end, that we may press forward to the goal and the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus, that we may choose not the cheap and, and passing things, but let us go through and let us get the precious things that last forever that we may never take the easy way out, but that you leave us right where you are, right where we are, that we walk in the way, the truth, and the light, that we never forget the price and the sweat that came from your body and the blood that came from your body, and that without the cross, there cannot be a crown. We bless you. We praise you for it now in the name of Jesus. I want you to know that God loves you, that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. I want you to know that you have top 10 dependables that we believe in this church. God loves you, that God still loves you, that the Bible is still true, that God will hear you when you pray, that the Holy Spirit still seeks the lost, that the church will go on with or without you, that God will bless the preaching of his word, that the Holy Spirit will not leave you, that God knows your problems, and there's still room at the cross for you, and that Jesus still saves. And if you really never accepted Jesus, talking to those of you that have never been in a place to accept, or if you're a backslider, I want, would you accept him right now? Would you accept him in your heart? Don't delay. Don't put it off. So if you would like to receive Jesus Christ by faith, I want you to pray this simple prayer in your heart. Dear Lord, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I believe Jesus died for my sins on the cross and that he rose again on the third day. I repent of my sins and by faith, I receive the Lord Jesus as my savior. You promised to save me and I believe you because you're God and cannot lie. I believe right now that the Lord Jesus is my personal savior and that all my sins are forgiven through his precious blood. I thank you, dear Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Yes, it is so. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to know that God heard you and that God saved you. And I personally want to welcome you to the family of God. And we as a church, we rejoice with you. We want you to connect with us at acnhfc at gmail.com. We want you to write us at 1442 Hudson Road, Ferguson, Missouri, 63135. If you receive salvation, if you even have and want to connect with us, we want you to join us. We want you to join us here every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Join us every Sunday morning at 1045 on this platform and in person. Regardless to what happens with the pandemic, regardless of what happens with this corona uh, virus, we will always have a platform online. No matter how many people we have in church, we're going to always be online and we're going to always make this available for you that have joined us. I want you to connect with us. If the Lord saved you, let us know that the Lord saved you. We want to see you some material. We want to connect with you. Thank God for our members that have been joining and connecting with us. We appreciate you all so much. Thank you all for just connecting and being so faithful. We want to remind you again this Friday. This Friday, there's Good Friday service. Come in for work. Join us 7 p.m. in person or virtually. And then the Sunday resurrection morning, we want you to join us at 1045. If you have uh, time to come to Sunday school, come join us Sunday school at 915. There is a word that will bless you. I believe the people of the Lord need to study the word of God systematically. All right. I appreciate you. I love you all so much. I want everybody to be prepared to sow a seed into this ministry. 
I want you to sow a seed. You can scan on the QR code uh, through dollar sign ACNHFC. You can go to GiveLify, PayPal's there, or write a check, mail us at 1442 Hudson Road. I want everybody that can sow to sow right now. I want everybody to get a $25 gift. Everybody, let's sow right now in this anointing. Let's raise this offering to the glory of God. This is pastoral night, so everybody sow the gift as unto the Lord. Don't just look at it as being pastoral night, but never come uh, to the house of God. Never come uh, with empty hands. Always purpose in your heart what it is you will give. Let's sow right now. Come on, dollar sign ACNHFC. Let's give this unto the Lord. Please, ma'am, please, sir, let's sow. We appreciate every gift. While you're doing that, we are in a campaign to raise funds for our ministry. I'm using this platform now to ask those of you that would like to sow in our campaign. We have a goal in mind to raise $100,000. I want to report to you, this church, first time ever reporting it, that the state has uh, called me and confirmed that on Wednesday at 8 a.m., next Wednesday at 8 a.m., in seven days, a little bit under seven days, they will be in our camp, on our campus, going through our downstairs so that we can go through the next step of opening for our Christian education center, our daycare. I want you to be praying. I want you to be praying that God's favor, as I told you, the reason why I speak this stuff, because I, I apply to my life, that favor goes before our ministry. I want you to be praying. I want you to be praying. Now, I, I want you to be praying that God will get the glory out of the endeavor, the vision he's given us for this house. I believe it's already done. I believe it's already done. And if there's anything that we need to do to do updates, we already know what we need to do. But I'm believing and decreeing that it's not going to be too expensive. How many of y'all know that we can decree and declare a thing? So I want you all to, to know that we're trying to do the work of the Lord. Come on, as you're giving, remember that you can give in our pledge. There are members in the church that receive envelopes that have purposed in their heart to help with the renovation and fundraiser. We're asking each member to take these envelopes and to raise through family, friends, a $1,000 gift, or someone just going to flat out give that $1,000 gift. I need you all to sow. I need you all to love your church, to fundraise for your church. It's not going in my pockets. You already seen what we've done in six weeks. You saw it. You see what's going on with phase two, the new sound system that's going to be, we're waiting on parts. Amen. We're waiting on our chairs to be uh, delivered. I need you all to know I'm moving forward with phase three to get this congregation, the, the upstairs sanctuary up and running. Then I need you all to know that some of this money is going to be used to take downstairs and renovate and be prepared for our daycare. Amen. I'm believing God. I'm running all the way to see what this end is going to be, but I want you to help and partner with us. Amen. What you make happen for God, God will make happen for you. And what you make happen for others, others will make happen for you. Come on, all over the place, all over where you are. I was going to say the building like I was in church. Come on, let's just give right now. Everybody, come on, as unto the Lord. Uh, say, here I go again, believing God. Here I go again, trusting God. The seed that I sow is not a debt that I owe. It leaves my hand, but not my life. It goes into my future. Favor goes before me. Thank you for your generosity. In my last few moments, I want to say this. I received information from our school on April 23rd, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. This Saturday is the 16th, next Saturday, April 23rd. Those of you that would like to join us, our pastor's aid leader have already read the announcement. I'm going to have her read it again. It's not to honor me, but I want you all to be a part of this because you guys gave me the liberty and the wherewithal to pastor, work, and go to school. And so I would love for you all to join us 9 a.m. April 23rd at the campus of Maryville University. 650 Maryville Drive. It's literally right off 141 and 64. If you take 64 East from 270, I'm sorry, 64 West from 270, you can uh, make that right off Maryville Drive and come into the campus. It's going to be at the auditorium. I need to be there by 815 for the professional, but I want you all to join us at 9 a.m. on April 23rd. And then from there, it starts at 9 and then I will have a link that will be made available for those that would like to view it virtually. And there will be cameras, and so there, it will be done virtually. And so there is a, uh, uh, it, while I'm being hooded, I believe there is an intro that I recorded that will be used. And it's just saying thank you to those individuals that were supportive. It was only 45 seconds. I had to condense it down. 
but in my published work, there is acknowledgement. And then I definitely acknowledge family and friends and church. So I thank you all so much. This is an exciting time for me, and I want you to join us. And then later sometime this year, we'll have a celebration. But this uh, next Saturday, the 23rd, uh, will be at 9 o'clock, and then we'll go somewhere for brunch. Those that would like to join us, we'll have that information made, made really available for you. I appreciate you all so much. This was a goal of mine to complete this goal before I turn 42. And I'm literally 41, and I'll be 42 May 10th. And so I'm thankful for this church. I love you all. Thank you all for joining us. I appreciate you all, everybody that's on. Thank you all for always being connective. We're praying for Deacon Mike Moore. We're praying for his wife as she's helping out with the family. We're praying for my family. We're praying for Sister Crowley's family that the Lord will strengthen them. I want you all to be praying for me because it's always hard uh, preaching a funeral, but it's really hard when it's a tragic funeral, death of a loved one, and when it's a, uh, uh, a tragic shooting death. And so we're praying that the will of the Lord be done. I appreciate you all. Please continue to give into this ministry. God bless you. Thank you all so much. See you Friday at 7 p.m. If not, I'll see you Sunday, 1045. Remember, you're blessed, highly favored, and that favor goes before you. God bless you.